The MoFi Source Point 10 Master Edition is a new addition. Spelled differently. Uh, to MoFi's Source Point line. Now, what this does is it takes the previous Source Point 10 and it upgrades the crossover. As far as real tangible benefits are, are twofold. One is that the back of the crossover has a switch that allows you to adjust the high frequency or the treble region in different settings. So you have the high, mid, and low settings. My biggest gripe with the non-master edition, so let's just call it the original version of this speaker, was the high frequency was just too much. It was anywhere from like, I don't know, maybe two to four decibels, just too hot for me. And that's why I preferred, at least at the time, the source point eight. So with this version, the ability to tweak that high frequency level and drop that down to me is what makes all the difference in the world. Now the price for this speaker is about $500 more for the pair than the original version. And is it worth upgrading for that reason alone? Personally, I would say yes. And if you have the Source Point 10 original, you can buy an upgraded crossover kit and just swap out the crossover and that gives you this ability. If you are like me where you found that the high frequency was just a little bit too much and you don't have equalization, I think it's worth it to buy this aftermarket, I guess, OEM aftermarket upgrade. I'd get the upgrade. The other reason that I think this crossover has a legitimate redesign is that the impedance network has been changed so that will work with multiple amps and not color the sound. So let's give you an example of what I'm talking about when I talk about the impedance. Right here, we have a graphic of the impedance for the original version in blue and the impedance in the master version in red. So immediately you're gonna notice, yeah, the blue is a lot higher in some of these peaks, but I wanna focus primarily on this region. Now this high peaking blue is the crossover network between the tweeter and the midwoofer on the original version. And this high resonance right here, this high impedance, that can cause variability in a high impedance output amplifier. That means that it can definitely change the sound profile from one amplifier to another when you have a speaker that has this kind of impedance. So what they have done with this new version is they have flattened out this impedance and that makes it less variable in terms of sound and tonality from amp to amp. For these two reasons, the treble switch and the impedance, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade if you're wanting to get this particular speaker or upgrade the crossover. Now let's talk about sound. When you face a coaxial speaker at you, typically that's non-ideal. So ideally what you wanna do with most coaxial speakers is to tow them out by some degree, pun intended. This is the frequency response on axis in the black line. You can see the average sensitivity is about 89.2 decibels, which is actually really good. The F3 is at 57 Hertz, F10 is at 40 Hertz. If you look higher in the frequency, you can see some dips and some peaks going on. Now, if you turn the speaker 10 degrees away, you can see that some of the severity of the peaks and dips minimizes a little bit. So what I tend to land on for most coaxial speakers is anywhere from like 10 to 20 degrees, which means instead of pointing it directly at you, you tow it away from you a little bit so it's facing more out into the room or maybe firing behind your head instead of right at your ears. That is ideal. Now, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get the best results doing in that way, but with this particular speaker, I think you're going to. I landed on about 10 to 20 degrees as well. Now, without taking a protractor and measuring it, I kinda had to eyeball it. So I'd say somewhere in that ballpark is where I landed. Doing that, bringing the speakers at least a foot off the wall tended to work best for my situation. Now, in terms of overall tonality, I love these speakers. They are very, very neutral. If anybody describes them as warm or bright or sibilant, I would disagree. However, if you have that switch on the back set to high, which mimics very closely to the original version, as you can see here, then yes, these speakers can sound bright and they did sound bright to me. So I typically found that I was gonna put the switch around the low setting and then sometimes I would put it on the medium setting. I like the ability to do this because let's say you're listening to something uh, maybe late at night and you don't wanna have to turn the volume up too loud. Maybe you just go and flip that switch to high and you get a little bit more detail if you want out of that system, but you don't have to. 
Overall, for a more neutral setting, I would again recommend low or mid tweeter level setting. In terms of base extension, this is pretty much the same as the original version. You're not gonna get any lower base. You're not gonna get any more chest pounding base. Nothing there has changed. So you're still gonna get down to about 40 to 50 Hertz in room for most rooms. Now, obviously the further you bring the speaker out from the wall or the closer you put it to it, the more that's gonna change. And earlier I said about a foot makes the most sense. I found that just by trial and error, and I actually landed on about two feet off the wall. That worked best for me to give me some nice bottom end without sounding too boomy due to the proximity of placement near the wall. The other thing about this speaker that I really, really like, the overall envelopment of the soundstage. Now, I just did a video about some Sony $250 bookshelf speakers, and in that video, I talked about how with the Sony speakers, the soundstage was just a 2D plane, just right in front of you. And I analogized it, analogized? I don't know. You guys know what I mean. I related it to playing Mario Brothers on the original NES versus playing Mario Brothers on something like a Switch where it's 3D. In this case, the MoFi would be the 3D or the Switch. The way that the sound encompasses the speaker, it's just a big, large spherical sound rather than just a wall of sound right in front of you. Now I did this testing back to back, AB testing in mono speakers right in front of me, level matched in the mid range. I did it with the Sony's and I did it with the Fozzie SP601. And I also did it with the Scilab C6B. And those speakers I really think are fantastic for about $1,200 or so a pair. The MoFi in this regard pretty much walked over every one of those speakers. And I got to think it's due to the actual true point source nature of the speaker, meaning that the sound comes from one point in space and it's not spread over a tweeter and a mid range below it. Now, I'm not saying that you can't get really good sound out of your typical two way or even typical three way design that is non coaxial. But in my experience, coaxial seem to just do a really good job of having a really wide sense of space and envelopment in the soundstage. And I just really like that a lot. Of course, it's sighted listening, so maybe I'm off my rocker, but I'm just letting you know what I heard. This is also attributable to the fact that this speaker's profile, horizontal and vertical radiation profiles are very similar directly on axis and off axis to the side. All you're essentially doing is tapering the treble. And that means that with this speaker, the sound power the sound that's sent out all into the room is very, very even. In my experience, I notice speakers with very smooth sound power or even early reflection directivity index, as you see here in this blue line that's highlighted. When you have a linear slope to these, the overall sound is just generally better. The tonality sounds better, the sense of envelopment and the sound stage sound more cohesive, and the imaging tends to be more pinpoint precision-like. And those are the things that I noticed with this particular speaker. Suffice it to say, I am over the moon with this speaker. I think it is fantastic. The only area that I wish I could improve it would be the bass. But they also now have the MoFi SourcePoint V10 that's going to have this same 10-inch coaxial and then a couple 10-inch mid-bass drivers and then a pair of 10-inch passive radiators on the back. I don't know what the price is going to be. I hesitate to say what it is, but... I think it's probably safe to say that you're most likely looking at about two times the cost of this. So if you're on a limited budget, but you want the sound that I'm talking about, this speaker makes a good compromise in the fact that you won't likely get the very deep bass extension that you might want to get if you're listening to a genre like hip hop or you're watching movies and you're going after those special effects. In those two particular cases, you're probably gonna to wanna to get a subwoofer. In terms of overall SPL, maybe lower volume, higher volume dynamicism, great speaker. This speaker has really good transient capability, which equates to a couple different things, at least in my opinion. Number one is at low volume, you're gonna have good quick thump like that because you're not slagging as you increase the dynamic range of your music. So for example, if you are listening to a track that has 15 decibels of dynamic range and you're listening to it at like 75 decibels and then that kick drum comes in and it's got 15 decibels of dynamic just pop out of nowhere. Is this speaker capable of giving that to you? Well, 
Yeah, it is. And this compression measurement is a good indicator of that. The other reason that having low compression is also helpful is if you're listening to music at a lower volume and then you start increasing the volume. So let's say you're listening at 75 decibels on average, not talking about dynamic peaks, but just on average. And then you want to increase it to 90 decibels. So you want to go up 15 decibels in output. What you'll tend to find with speakers that have either high compression issues or maybe built-in limiters like a powered monitor speaker is that as you increase the volume, you're going to notice that there's less bass output. So if you listen particularly for like a good kick drum, and as you increase the volume, you'll notice relative to the rest of the frequency response, that kick drum doesn't sound as powerful at the higher volume as it did at the lower volume. And of course, there is the whole Fletcher Munson equal loudness curve contour, but we hear things in that same relationship. So it doesn't really matter. You're listening for, does the bass keep up with the mids and the highs? And if you have low compression speakers, it will. This speaker is low compression, so it has no problem doing that as well. So then if we look at the multi-tone distortion, which I show you here, this speaker does not cross my personal threshold of 3% until it gets to about four kilohertz or so. And I can't really say honestly that I had an issue with this. Typically, the issues that I have with high multi-tone distortion measurements are the mid-range area where it comes across as very grainy and also compressed. I didn't have that issue with this speaker. At some points, I was actually listening to the speaker in the low 90 decibel region at about 10 feet away. So in terms of SPL, this speaker gives up plenty of output. That does it for my review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, ask away in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them, but I've just been really busy lately. And I'll be honest, I don't know that I'll get the time, but I'll try. If you would like to support this content and keep it coming, here's a few ways that you can do so. One is you can use any of my generic affiliate links in the description section below or in the pinned post, which means that you want to buy something from Amazon. You just click my Amazon affiliate link. You go buy whatever it is you want to buy. If you want to buy a television from Crutchfield or you want to buy these speakers from Crutchfield, you click that link. It'll take you there and you buy it. And I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything. And I really really appreciate that because honestly, that's pretty much the only real way that I generate any income for my reviews. And I spend a lot of time for my reviews and it's nice to make a little bit of extra and I'm just trying to be transparent. Okay. Also, you can join me at patreon.com and you can support me that way. And you get behind the scenes information, early review drops and things of that nature. And, and again, I really appreciate that as well. So I will talk to y'all later. If you're interested in these speakers, I say buy them and that's it. All right. Take care. Oh, and MoFi did loan me these speakers to review, but they didn't pay me or anything like that. I'm going to send them back when I'm done. Okay, that's it. Peace.